I appreciate the opportunity. There's been some tremendous, powerful preaching. And um, you know what? I, I'm a preacher. That's what I, that's, I, I, I got trained in the streets. I got saved during a time of revival. I was 14 years old when I gave my life to Jesus. I'm going to be 50 years old in about a week and a half. Been in church for 36 years of my life. I got saved, got married at the age of 21, became youth pastors at the age of 22. We were doing it for six years until we got kicked out of our church. And so my wife's been with me throughout the journey. And I want to talk to you about something because we've been hearing great preaching. We've been hearing rhema word. The word of God has been delivered to you and I throughout these last few days. And so what we need is we need people that are going to do something with it. We need people that are going to run with the word of God. For the Bible says that where there is no vision, my people perish. The purpose of this conference, read the title, go. To go means to go. It means to do something about it. It means to respond. It means to be disciples. It means to be men and to be women who are going to be devoted. And that is the title of my message. Devoted to the vision. Devoted to the cause. Because if there is one thing that Jesus Christ did, I want you to understand that he invested for uh, maybe three and a half years of his, of his life. He invested in the life of average men just like you and I. He began to deposit the vision of heaven. He began to deposit the heart of God into the lives of these men. And so once they're all done, once he's uh, resurrected, uh, he speaks to the disciples once again. Uh, and you probably would have thought that he would have told them, Hey, you know what? It was nice knowing you guys. It was nice hanging out with you guys. It was nice just showing a few miracles for you guys. See you guys later. Nope. He challenged them. He challenged them and he says, now go. The Bible speaks to you and I out of the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The same thing is being mentioned in the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 14 to 15. It says later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. Listen, he rebuked them. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go. Can I say that again tonight? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let's pray tonight. God, my Father, I pray that you bless. I pray that you anoint more than anything this word. And I pray that you anoint hearing, Lord God, that People and men and women respond because we need workers, because we need preachers, we need disciples. In the name of Jesus, we pray and all of God's people say today, amen, amen and amen. A truth about being a people of faith is that we are called to have a relationship with God. I met Pastor Larry about 12, 13 years ago. And throughout the years, you know what, our relationship, our friendship, our brotherhood, the more you get to know somebody, your relationship gets stronger. The more you get to know God, 
The more that you get to spend time with God, your faith gets edified. You are equipped. Uh, listen to me. You know what? Like I said, I went to church when I was 14 years old. Uh, and at the age of 17, there was a conference, our harvesters. And I remember the preacher, Ron Simpkins. He says, God wants to use your life. He didn't just save you by coincidence. He did not make a mistake when he reached out to you. Uh, and he says, who would respond? And I was 17 years old when I rose my hand and I went to the altar and I said, you know what, God, I want your will to be done in my life. And I became a disciple. And I allow people to speak to me. And I allow people uh, to encourage me. Uh, and I allow, I allow people to mold me uh, and to speak the word of God uh, and hear me uh, because of my background. Because coming uh, from a dysfunctional family, uh, you know what? I was told uh, that I was never going to amount to anything. Your dad was a drunk. You are born to be a drunk. But God broke that curse. And I want you to listen. I believed it. And I began to respond. And I began to get involved in the church. And more than anything, I was not just attending church. I became a disciple. And I began to grow in the grace and the knowledge uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, and my relationship with God, it got stronger uh, and it got stronger. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, I began to catch a vision. Uh, they spoke to me and they said, God could use you. Uh, God could take you places. And I'm not here to brag like Pastor Larry Gregory said a few moments ago. Uh, but hear me, uh, this guy uh, that got saved at the age of 14, uh, I've been all over the world preaching the word of God. Uh, I have spoken to people. Uh, I've laid hands on people uh, and by the grace of God uh, they get saved uh, and they get healed. Uh, I've seen the power of God uh, being demonstrated. Why? Because somebody said God can use your life. And I caught a vision. See a disciple is one who follows and learns and in the process he begins to change. And we have to be intentional as our brother was sharing earlier this morning uh, with the purpose and that is to lead other people and to allow people to speak into our lives. Because discipleship is what changes the identity of any church. This church needs disciples. I've gone to meet some of the pastors here in the last couple of days. And I'll guarantee you there's one thing that you pray for in your church. Uh, you pray for disciples. Men that will catch a vision. Without a doubt, you want men that will carry the burdens of the ministry. Men that will get involved. But more than anything, men that will be compassionate for souls. Are you with me? You know why a lot of people don't respond? Because they're apathy. If it does not affect me, I'm good. If it's not affecting me directly, then there's nothing to worry about. The book of Matthew chapter 9 speaks to you and I about an event. The Bible says that Jesus Christ saw the multitudes of people. And the Bible says that he was moved. He was moved with compassion. Some writers tell you and I that he actually dropped to the ground. And began to weep because he saw the multitudes as sheep without a shepherd. And he touched the heart of our creator. And he brought him to tears uh, when he sees the multitude of people. Uh, see church, I'm not talking to you about animals. Go. Because there's people outside of this church that are dying without Jesus. And he was moved with compassion. 
Have you ever been moved with compassion? Have you ever wept for a soul? Have you ever lost sleep uh, in the middle of the night? You wake up uh, and you thought of family members, uh, maybe a friend, uh, maybe a co-worker. Uh, and you see, and, and when he's moved with compassion, uh, the Bible says he turns to the disciples. He says the harvest is plentiful. But the same problem still in our day, but the workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. See, Jesus Christ could have taken it upon himself to go and minister to the multitude, but he places a responsibility uh, on you and I tonight. Uh, this conference uh, is not about, and, and I'm sure, Pastor Larry, uh, it's not about just getting you excited. Uh, it's not about just getting you all pumped up. Uh, it's not about getting you all excited and, uh, you know what, just, oh, we love God. No, 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 we need workers. We need you as a disciple, as a man, as a woman to respond to the cause because that is exactly what touched the heart of God. Uh, he never wept uh, when, when, when the people uh, were hungry. Uh, the Bible says, he says to the disciples, feed them and he fed them. He never wept when, when, when there was a demonic uh, uh, a manifestation. We all know that he wept when Lazarus died. But when the religious people came against him, uh, he didn't just go to a corner and, 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 and wept. But you know what touched the heart of God? People. Souls. The lost. And we can get all excited in the house of God. But there's still people that need to hear the gospel. Pastor Larry says, we got a vision to plant churches. That's been our vision. I come from a, from, a, from a fellowship that is involved in church planting, uh, in discipleship, uh, in, in world vision. Uh, and, and that is what moves us. Uh, you know what? Well, we didn't sign up to this to be popular. We didn't say, yo, here I am, go, Lord, I'll go because we, we want to be these great preachers. Uh, and we want and finally, uh, where's the camera? I'm on TV. <laughs> finally, my dream came true. I can now die and go to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. You know why we did it? You know why we made sacrifices? And I'm sure like Pastor Larry said, most pastors in this place, you have made sacrifices. Because we heard the cry. We heard the cry. The Bible says now in the book of Acts chapter 16, uh, verse 9 and 10. During the night, Paul had a vision uh, of a man of Macedonia standing, uh, begging him. Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once. To leave to Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. It's what we call the Macedonian call. The Macedonian cry. A man who was hurting uh, and he's begging, uh, please come and help us. Please send somebody to preach the word of God to us. We are hopeless. I don't know how bad, uh, you know, homelessness is here in this city. Most of us know what it is. You, you see people in the city now uh, pushing a shopping cart. Uh, you see women prostituting themselves. Uh, you see people's lives being broken uh, because of addiction. Uh, you see homes being destroyed uh, because everything that is going on, because that is what sin is doing. Uh, one of our brothers said, uh, the devil, he's very good at what he does. Uh, he lies, he destroys, and, and he they said it this morning. He's the father of all lies. We live in a time uh, when people have believed the lie that the devil. Uh, and can you and I hear the cry of those who are in pain tonight? And I apologize if I'm spitting on those on the front row. 
That's why I asked them, can you guys please put the, the, the little thing a little back? Because if not, all of you guys would have been anointed already. <laughs> you guys would have been slain in the spirit right now. <laughs> but can you hear the cry? The theme of our conference is go. And I wonder if our next preachers, I know they're sitting so... The, uh, you know, they're sitting in the front. But I'm speaking to those in the fourth row and beyond. Will you go? Can you come up to Pastor Larry and say, you know what, after this Go conference, uh, there's something that happened within my spirit, uh, and I know that I'm called to preach the Word of God. Pastor Larry, uh, I just don't want to attend church. Uh, make me a disciple. Speak to me. Show me what I must do. And he says, come over. Years ago, after a Sunday night fellowship, you know, we, we, we went to a Mexican restaurant. And my boy, he's now 19 years old. He was probably about five, six years old. And my daughter was three years younger than, her, than him. So we got off the car and my boy just runs because there was people already walking into the restaurant. And so he sees some of the other kids and he just runs. And as he runs, my little daughter, she runs behind him. She's about three years old. And as she's running, here's this car that is driving pretty fast in the parking lot. When I seen that, I ran around the car and I said, stop. I, I, you know, I seen that my daughter was in danger, uh, and I had to go, excuse me, sir. Can you slow down just a little bit, because you may hit my little girl. <laughs> there was desperation. There was something within me that moved uh, to cry out, uh, and I wanted people to listen to me. Uh, and some people describe that dream that Paul has. It's a, it's a cry of desperation. Can somebody uh, here uh, in, in, in Florida come and help us out and preach the Word of God to us? Because everything that we need in Christ... It is the purpose of the gospel to get into you and I. Hear me today. If you don't leave this conference changed, then we preachers, we failed. We failed you. If you don't catch a vision, we failed you. If you don't want to grow as a disciple, if you don't want to build your church, then we have failed you. Because we have sought the mind of God tonight. In the, with the purpose of bringing the Word of God and for the Word of God to be deposited into you. And so we notice that Jesus Christ connected. He connected purpose in the lives of the disciples. But at the same time, and maybe some of you preachers have noticed this, He links uh, uh, of the harvest field with work. With labors. There's a connection. If you want God to, to, and some of you, if you guys have pioneered the church, you guys can testify about this, is that it took work. Some people can see this. So, well, what, what a good church. But you guys weren't there in the early days. Maybe when Pastor Larry and his wife and his family, uh, they had to make sacrifices one time. You know, my wife and I, we got into the city of Fontana, and, and it was July. Now, you know, July is a very bad time to go into California. So I thought, if we go and outreach when it's 110 degrees outside, <laughs> God will honor our sacrifice. <laughs> the angels will walk next to us. Even, maybe even Mary will come down or something. And, and so I'm telling you, 
you know, my wife, I want to thank her because she, she goes along with me a lot of times. She shakes her head, okay, here you go again. And so we're knocking on doors, and it's like, I mean, we're sweating. And, and we knocked, you know, and we invited people to church. And I still remember this lady just opened the door, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, she's red, and I'm purple. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're just, it's hot. Well, I, we're from the church, and I would like to tell you, she goes, do you want some water? And we thought, you know, the greater the sacrifice, but we made those sacrifices. And after 20 plus years, we've seen how God has blessed us. Uh, we've seen how God has raised the church. Uh, we've seen how God has established our ministry. Uh, and so you see, you, you, you pastors, you, you know the battles that you went through. And some of you pioneering pastors, uh, you know how tough it's been. Uh, why? Because you were able to connect the harvest field with labor. With work. And it makes me wonder. How did Jesus Christ feel so confident. That he commands them. See because the phrase. Go and make disciples. Which is found in Matthew 28, 19. And also in the book of Mark. Chapter 16, 15. I'm, I'm, 14, I'm 16, 15. Where it says now go into all the world. Uh, that, that, that is not a request. It's a command. Jesus Christ didn't say pretty please. Could you please go. He commanded him. And I began to study that, the confidence that Jesus Christ had. He, he can go up to, the, to heaven and be at the right side of the Father with confidence that these men that he invested his life into are going to do. Because he did say, stay here in Jerusalem uh, until the Spirit of God comes upon you. Because I want, I want to tell you, uh, I, I'm not, I, I, one of the things that I tell people, I, I don't want to be a, a, a good preacher. I want to be an anointed preacher. He says, stay until the Spirit of God comes upon you. And how does he have this great confidence that these men are going to do it? Because somewhere in the three and a half years of ministry, listen to how they responded to Jesus. When all everyone else was leaving Jesus, when he challenged them, the disciples in Matthew chapter 19, verse 27, speak to Jesus and they said, We have left everything behind to follow you. In the book of John, chapter 6, verse 67 to 68, uh, when Jesus Christ again told them, uh, Are you also going to leave? Uh, they told them, We got nowhere else to go, Jesus. In the book of Matthew chapter 16, and that was spoken of in the last few days. Uh, who do people say that I am? Some say that you are a great prophet. Some say that you are a, a great teacher. But who do you say that, that I am? You are the Christ, uh, the Son of the living God. And at that moment, Jesus Christ understands uh, these disciples. They know who I am. Uh, you are the Son of the living God. Peter, uh, it is not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven has imparted it unto you. Uh, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You see church. These men. Uh, they, they show Jesus. Uh, we have left everything behind to follow you. Uh, we got nowhere else to go. Jesus we know who you are. You're not just a great teacher. You're not just my buddy. We're not just here to kick it together. You are the son of the living God. Peter, upon this revelation that my father has, has imparted into your life, that it is the kind of men and women in which I can build my church. See, who is Jesus? 
Who is Jesus to you tonight? He's the son of the living God. He says, go now. And to go means to leave the comfort of your life. To go means to pick up that cross with the devotion, with, with your mind's got to be made up that you are never going to drop that. To leave behind. You left your family. You know, I still remember my wife is very close to her family. I think my family was thankful that I was leaving. <laughs> and, and that's just the way it was. <laughs> we got announced on a Friday night, and I think I got the record of all the churches that our center has ever planted. I got the record of leaving the, the sooner. I got a, announced on a Friday night, and I was driving on my U-Haul the next day at 8 o'clock in the morning. I was gone. My wife was driving the car. I was driving the U-Haul. And I remember still the spot. You know, if you ever visit El Centro, it's surrounded by fields. It's all you see. Small little town in the middle of nowhere. Heber. A town of about 2,000 people, over 20 preachers have come out, out of that little town. All right. All right. All right. And I remember I began to cry. And this thought came to my mind, what in the heck am I doing? <laughs> but you know what? My mind had already been made up. Yeah. I got nowhere else to go, Jesus. And the very thing that we all need as a church, it is important for the survival, for revival within our church, and that is devotion. To be focused, to be devoted to the vision. Listen, it's not my vision. It's not Pastor Larry's vision. We all pastors didn't just get along and we got on social media. And can we say, hey, let's come out with a great title for the conference. Go 2020. Uh, it's not our vision. I'm talking to you about God's vision. And so if you and I are going to learn from anybody tonight, let us learn from Jesus. Because we are called to be devoted and to be devoted is more than just a feeling. It is more than just an experience. It is more than just feeling the goosebumps. You're going to have to stay devoted even when you don't want to. You're going to have to carry that cross even when it hurts. And so we follow the example of Jesus Christ. As our brother mentioned earlier, amen, in the, in, in the sermons, uh, we know nothing about Jesus from the age of 12 until he is 30. We have no idea how he lived his life. Was he a good carpenter? Maybe he was. Maybe he was not. We don't know. But what we do know that at the age of 12, he knew who he was. He gets in trouble by his parents. They come back to Jerusalem. You know where he's at? He's at church. What have you done this to me? Or the parents said, and this is what it says in Luke chapter 2 verse 40. In the I'm sorry, Luke chapter 2 verse 49. He says, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? <laughs> What's your business tonight? What's your business tonight? Can God get into your business? Can God challenge you tonight? I was 14 years old when I got saved, and there's a lot of youth in this house tonight. Can you imagine if you guys come up to Pastor Daniel and Pastor Larry and say, Disciple me. 
Well, I'm too young. Well, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm proving you wrong tonight. Jesus was 12 and I was 14. Can you disciple me? Can you speak word to me? Can you make me a man, a woman of integrity, a man or a woman with character? And so later on, you and I read that Jesus Christ gets arrested. And he's got every opportunity to walk away. He stands in front of, uh, in front of Pilate. Uh, and, and so in the book of John chapter 18, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pilate uh, verse, chapter 18 verse 37, he says, you are a king then? And Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born. And for this, I came into the world, and that is to testify to the truth. It does not matter what I went through, he says. I'm still going to testify. At the age of 12, he knows I need to be devoted to the vision. Uh, at the age of 12, he knows this is the reason uh, why I was born into this earth. Uh, this is the reason uh, why I'm going to go through hard times. This is the reason uh, why demons are going to manifest. Uh, the, why religious people are going to come against me. Uh, they, he didn't just come uh, to perform a few miracles. Uh, he didn't just come to raise the dead. Uh, he didn't just come to say, Lazarus, come forth. Uh, he didn't just come to walk on water and say hey guys check this out isn't this so cool I'm able to walk on no he came to say what the word of God tells you and I in the book of John chapter 19 verse 30 which is the last statement that is recorded in scripture it is finished it is finished at the age of 12, he says, don't you know that I am about my father's business? And at the age of 33, as he hangs on that cross, picture this with me. He still has enough grace to say to one man that confesses his sin, today, verily I say unto you, you shall be with me in paradise. He's still looking after his mom. But yet... He says, I didn't deviate. Even when Satan thought he had him in the desert, he stood in the word of God. Satan, uh, you know, my translation is, you are so stupid. Uh, don't you know that it is written? That's Lorenzo International Version. <laughs> and if you want the newest update, it even cusses. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Delete that from the video. But he says it is finished because he stayed the course. And that's what a disciple does. That's what a disciple does. If you were to sit with every preacher in this conference today, I mean, we got war stories. I mean, in every conference, every single one of us brings our violin. But they keep the course. But they're still fighting. Why? Because we are devoted to the vision. Can you say amen? amen? The value of devotion is found and revealed in the life of Jesus at the age of 12. He is devoted not to the cause of a fellowship, of a ministry, or a denomination. He's devoted to the cause that came from heaven. Are you with me? Paul says in the book of Colossians, it was God who separated me, who set me apart to be devoted. And the fact about being dedicated or loyal to Jesus Christ Reveals to you and I as to the kind of disciples that are, we are going to be. A disciple's got to be disciplined. Can't be playing games with God tonight. Can't be playing games with God. 
You got to be disciplined. You got to know the direction in which you are going. Some of you guys, as you grow in discipleship, you will grow in leadership. I have a hard time following people that don't know where they're going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But if you know where you're going, I'll follow you. I'll labor with you. I'll, 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 I'll be your, I'll link hearts with you. You got to be dedicated. There's going to be challenges, obstacles, attacks. But there's one thing that you and I need to understand. That it's got to be your decision. I've realized after 21 years of pastoring that there's not a power within me to change people. I can't change people. I can't change you. So you have to make the decision. I think one of our brothers says you got critics. You got consumers. And you got some that contribute. Are, are, which, which, what kind of Christian are you? You also have to understand that there is no defeat. As ugly and as nasty as sometimes he may get, you cannot allow the devil to defeat you. You got to focus on your destination. And when you do that, you will overcome your discouragements, your distractions, and the disappointments in life. You got to focus. Will I get feedback if I step off? I just barely met Pastor Tom. Come on, come on up, brother. It's all right if we hold hands. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> and so say, hey, brother, look, I want to link my heart with you. Well, 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 where are you going, he's going to say. Well, I, I want to win souls. Yeah. Go. You got to walk with me because I'm not going to pull you. <laughs> and so, you know what? In the journey, see, some, some people do they what do he that. just did. They do that. Well, okay, go, go sit down, please. No. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. I know. <laughs> and, so, and so we link hearts. We link hearts. Why? Because he knows where I'm going. Because he's gone to know my heart. Because he understands that we're not just here to be popular because we're here for the sake of souls. He understands there's compassion. Yes. He understands there's people hurting. He understands that unless we preach to them, yes. they're going to die without Jesus. Yes, sir. And so what he does, he gets his son. Uh, and, and what he does, you know, more pastors. Uh, that's how we link hearts. Not because we are popular. Uh, not because we have this great personality. Uh, what draws us together is the cause of the ministry. And that is what moves you and I. That is why Pastor Larry is making the investment. For the sake of souls. Can you hear the cry tonight? Let's stay quiet for a little bit. In your city, in this community, can you feel that somebody right now needs you to preach to them the gospel? Or shall we get, wait for next conference? Thank you, brother. Can you hear the cry? Can you stand today and says, I'm willing to leave everything behind? Pastor Larry says uh, he made decisions. We've all had made those decisions. Are we going to go? Will you go? Can you hear the cry? Please, begging. Please come and help us. What's the nearest city? Here, Fort Myers. Can you imagine if the preacher, the couple that is going to go to Fort Myers, it's already here and, and you can hear the cry. Naples is the other one? Or is that just a little beach area? 
Naples, Central America. Any Hispanics in the house? El Salvador, Colombia, Venezuela, Cuba, Puerto Rico. But you see, it says go. It says go. And I understand some of the preachers preach on stain, and, and I understood what they were trying to say. But tonight, it's about you and I hearing the cry. There's a quote that I read. This is the motto of every missionary, whether preacher, printer, or schoolmaster, ought to be devoted for life. I'm devoted for life. This night, it's about going. It's about saying, Here I am, Lord. Use me. Brother, you know, one of the disciples, you know, he's now pastoring. We always joked around and said, we used to say, you know, that we live in a time when we pray, here I am, Lord, send him. <laughs> Can we stand? <laughs>